So welcome to part one of making a Game Boy in Blender. I'm going to be going through the complete modeling process and this is part one. You can see this is going to be the final result. And I'm going to just quickly go into part two as well, where I'm going to be showing you how to set up the materials and lighting. But overall, it's a pretty simple and straightforward tutorial. And I hope you guys like it. As always, I do make the blend files for these little projects available on my Patreon, which you can check out. And if you guys also want something for free, you can check out the link below. I've got a link to Skillshare. If you use my link in the description, you can get free access to my courses for one month. And not just my courses, but other Skillshare stuff as well. You can see if you like it. And that way it gets to help you guys out, but it also helps support the channel. So I really appreciate that. So without saying much more, let's get into part one of making this fun little Game Boy. Okay, so we're going to jump right into Blender. I'm going to be using Blender 3.10 at the point of recording. Now I'll quickly mention that I'm going to be using this reference image here. You can see on my desktop. I'll provide a link in the description below to where you can download that, but you don't have to use that exact same one. If you can find something similar, go ahead and use it. So what we're going to do in Blender we're gonna make sure we're in our front orthographic view by hitting one on a number pad. And I do apologize, I don't have my screencast keys enabled because I can't get it to work with this particular version of Blender and I've tried it quite a bit. So I'm gonna work on that a little bit more, but I apologize for that in advance. So what we're gonna do, you're just gonna go into your front orthographic view, take your reference image and just drag it into the viewport. And with that viewport image active, you're just gonna go G and move it and just roughly put it behind the default cube. And then you're gonna select default cube and you can go S to scale it. Select the image and then G to move it and just roughly move it until it's about the same width as the cube. So select the default cube and S to scale it. And I'm gonna move the plane just one more time. And that's about it. So you can see now it's the exact same width. So now we got the width out of the way. Just select the cube itself. Tap into edit mode and select the top verts. G, Z and move it to the top of the Game Boy. And do the same at the bottom. Select these bottom ones and just move them down. So you can see here on the reference, Okay, so just get it close. Don't be a perfectionist, but just get it as close as you practically can. Okay, so you guys can see here, the image isn't quite straight. Obviously it's an image, so it's not gonna be computer perfect, but you guys get the idea. So how do we round these edges out? So let's start with the big one, obviously, is this bevel here. Um, so when you do a bevel operation, make sure to go into object mode first. Because we scaled this, we are gonna have to go Control A or Command A inside of object mode with that object selected and apply to scale. So control A, command A, apply to scale. Tab back in and now go into your front orthographic view. In wireframe, select these bottom verts and you can go control B or command B if you're using Mac and make a bevel. But roll your middle mouse button afterwards to add in some segments. And we're not gonna be using a subdiv modifier. So just go ahead and make sure to add plenty of segments so it's not jaggedy. And about that much till it matches the reference is all good. And then we're gonna go around with our edge select. So select the edge option, go to edge select and holding in shift, we're just going to actually, let's hit A first to select everything and then go S, Y, and just scale it down on the Y so the thickness is correct um, before we go any further. So just about that much should be okay. So now select that edge and then holding in shift, just go around and select the other edges. So, and then what we need to do is we need to go shift, alt, and then click on this edge here. Shift Alt and click on this edge and it'll loop select that. So essentially we have every edge active on the Game Boy except these ones down here. Now go into your front orthographic, go into wireframe and see the bevel here that runs around this. We're gonna go Control B or Command B and just create a bevel. And you can see how we're making the bevel and roll your middle mouse button down to lessen the segments to about as many as you feel you need. So I'm gonna go over about four or five. And you can see here, we've got a nice round bevel. And it's all the way around, which is perfect. It matches our reference absolutely perfectly. It looks really clean. It looks really nice. So go back into solid view and let's just tab into object, right click and shade smooth. So just grab the plane reference, go G, Y and move it back so it's not intersecting. And now we have the Game Boy done. So let's do a few more things. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to add in some objects that we can use as Boolean cutters. So we're going to go shift A add in a cube and we're going to move this cube over this button here s to scale it down and just get it to the center of this little x here tap into edit mode and go to your vertex select select the top verts e to extrude out select these ones e to extrude and this is really easy i mean all we're doing is just selecting the verts that make up the face for each one of these squares around the cube and we're just extruding it roughly in place with a rough reference image 
And then we're going to hit A to select it. We're going to scale it up just a little bit so it's a bit bigger because it needs to be actually for the hole that the button's sitting in, the spacing, not the actual button itself. So just get it matched up as close as you can to that. So I'm just selecting these, moving them in. But like I said, don't overdo it with the perfection. Uh, just get it roughly. So might move it just a bit, scale it just a bit. Okay, so that's good enough for me at the moment. I'm going to tab out and I'm just going to make sure to move that forward on the Y. And then I'm going to select my Game Boy and I'm going to go to my modifiers. And let's just give that a Boolean. Click on the little eyedropper and select the Boolean. And what it's doing now, it's doing a cutting operation. So what we're going to do is, or a Boolean operation, but it's doing a difference. So it's cutting away this thing here. Look at it like a stencil, if you will. So we're then going to take this one. We're going to hit M. New collection, and let's just call it Cutter, and then go OK. Now we have a new layer or collection, if you will, that we can untick, and it's out of our way. Don't worry about the shading. We'll get to that in a little while. So now that we have that in place, let's do the exact same thing for these buttons here. So Shift A, a simple cylinder will do. So R, X, 9, 0, hit Enter, and then S to scale, and then just move it over these button holes. And you guys can already see where I'm going with this, right? We're going to do the exact same thing. But we're actually going to tab into edit mode of that. Shift D to duplicate and move it over. Like so. Tab out quickly. Control A and just apply the scale and then tab back in. And G, Y and move it forward just so they're both sticking outside of the mesh. And then once they're sticking out, just tab back out. Select your Game Boy and then duplicate your Boolean under the drop down. Get rid of the previous object, click on the eyedropper and now select these guys. Select them and then hit M and move them to your cutter layer so they're out of the way. So you guys can see where we're going with this. And by the way, just select the Game Boy and just temporarily if that's bothering you because it bothers me. I'm just going to go and give that an edge split just to clean things up a bit. Okay, so let's continue with that. In fact, the next thing we're going to do is just these little buttons here. But I'm going to put that into a little time lapse because literally it's just the ex exact same method I've used to make these buttons. So I'm sure you guys will be able to figure that out. So I'm just going to speed that up and then we'll continue. Okay, so you guys can see what I did here. I just made these two simple objects that were just pretty much a cylinder that I selected and extruded a bit, deleted the end caps, and then just filled the faces in, and I just duplicated that object. And once again, the exact same thing. Just duplicate your previous Boolean, get rid of the previous object that's being used, click on the eyedropper, and then select your new Boolean cutter, select that, and hit M, and move it to your cutter collection. And that's how simple it is. So that's all we're going to do so far with actual cutting in. As far as these little details here go, you can cut them in with little Boolean operations, but I'm just going to let that be a detail that the projected, projected texture will cover. So that's just my own personal preference, but you guys can go ahead and do the same technique if you want to do that. So let's now go and actually make the little buttons. The way I like to do that is to enable the cutter layer and just select all of the cutters. So hold in Shift and select all of them. Shift D to duplicate them and then hit M and move them to their own collection and call them buttons. Hit OK and now get rid of that cutter layer by just unticking it. And now we just have these buttons here which we can use. So, there, so select the first one that we made and go into edit mode, S to scale it down a bit and then you're simply going to go Control B or Command B and just bevel that. So you can roll down the segments with your middle mouse button, about that many. Then you can just select the verts if you need to and just make little adjustments to make it match the reference. But it's not actually that much that you have to do. It should be more or less in line with your reference image. So I'm going to tab back out of that one. And you can go G, Y and move it back in just a little bit so it's not out too much. And the exact same thing with these buttons here. You can select the faces, move them back just a bit, Control B or Command B to bevel. And you can actually go to median point, hit A to select both of them that are both active. And we can go S and just scale them down inside of there, just so they look like they have a little bit of a gap. And make sure they're not sticking out too much or too much in. And do the same thing with these buttons here. Simply just select the faces, move them in a bit, Control B to bevel, and then hit A to select both of them. And make sure you're still on the individual origins and then go S and just scale them down inside of there. 
And that's it. Let's set that back to median point. That's very important. And let's go back into object. And the Game Boy itself, um, one of the issues we have here is that obviously we need to bevel these edges in here or it's not going to look right. So let's come to our booleans with the Game Boy and just go to the drop down and apply all of our booleans, but not the edge split. We're then going to tab into edit mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our edge select option. And we're simply just going to go shift and we're going to just go around this edge. And you could go shift alt, but the problem is because we have funky topology here, if we go shift alt, it'll um, sometimes just go and select a random edge off to the side. So I wouldn't recommend it, but just go ar around and just select all of these edges, control B or command B and bevel them, roll your middle mouse button. And there you go. So just give it a little bit of rounding and the exact same thing. All I'm doing is shift and alt. I'm going around and just trying to select and that looks a lot better. And the same with these ones here. Now that's why I don't want to do shift alt because you can see what happens with the topology. So you're going to have to be careful how you do this. Um, if you select edges that you don't want. So for example, I'm just holding in shift while I select all of these edges. But if there's anything that you don't want selected, after you've made those selections, just hit C and then middle mouse button and then just go over them and deselect them. They should only have these edges around these holes here active. And once you have that done, go control B or command B and give them a little bevel as well. And that looks a lot better. So let's tab back out, select all of the buttons, holding and shift select the Game Boy last and then go control J or command J and just join them all together and then right click and then go shade smooth. So there's one thing we're gonna do before we go any further and that's just to project our texture. So let's go to our material properties here. We're gonna see there is already a material because we made this out of the default cube. There should be a default material. So go down to the base color and let's give this an image texture. Come to the little drop down and then give it that Nintendo reference image that we dragged in earlier and click on it. And now if we hit Z and you go material preview, we can see that the texture is actually being applied, but our UV is all over the place. So let's correct that by going to our UV editing workspace go into the front orthographic view and hit A to select everything and then go U and project from view. And over here, you're gonna select all of the geometry and you can go S to scale it up to the size of the reference and then G to move it in the window here. And you can see what we're trying to do over here. If you can't see it, just hit Z and go material preview. So you can see how things are lining up, but it shouldn't be too hard. Okay, you can see exactly what's happening here. And you can zoom in here, make sure everything is matching up. Okay, everything seems to be okay for now. So just like that, and you can see everything looks okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make the little LCD. So what we're gonna do is just go back to our layout, tab back into edit mode, go back into front orthographic view, and we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a cube. We're gonna move it up, scale it down just to about the size of the little screen here. And by the way, we're in our material preview. Then go S, X and scale it along the X. You can go to wireframe if you want and you can see if that all looks okay. And then once you're happy with it, control A. And once you're happy with it, you can go S, Y and just scale it on the Y a bit and make sure to move it forward. Control A and apply the scale. And then we're gonna just tab into edit mode real quick and we're just gonna grab these verts down here. Control B and give them a bevel. Roll the middle mouse button to add in some segments. And then each one of these you can go around to grabbing. So grab these verts here, bevel them. These ones here, control B and bevel them. And then lastly, this one here. And then you're gonna simply go back into object mode, select your Game Boy. And let's just give it one more Boolean operation. Click on a little eyedropper and then select that screen. Come to the drop down and apply that Boolean. And then we can actually get rid of that cutter object. Now, if we select the Game Boy and we hit Z and we go material preview, all we have to do is tab into edit mode and then select this screen, if you will. And we can go shift D to duplicate it and then G, Y, move it forward till it's at the front here. Then we're gonna go E to extrude it in like so. Hit X and delete that extra face. Then just select the face itself and then go control B or command B and create a bevel, just a slight bevel around it. And then we're gonna go control L while we have them active. And that's just gonna select all of this loose geometry. 
go to your UV editing workspace and then in your front orthographic, go U and project from view. And then just grab this geometry and move it, scale it up and just get it to, to match the UV projection over here or the image, just like that. And then over here, you can see in your material preview, it's all matching up. Now that looks good, but if you go into solid view, you can notice that this is all nice and round, but on the Game Boy here, this edge, if I just hide that screen, this edge in here is all sharp and you don't have to do this, but what I would recommend is you just go to edge select and then go shift alt and click on this edge and keep going all around till the whole edge is selected. And you can see here's a stray selection. So I'm just going to hit C middle mouse button and click on that. And you should now be able to go control B and also bevel that as well. Give it a bit of a bevel, then go alt H if you've hidden the screen and now hit Z and go material preview. And that's looking a lot better. And that's it. So that's how you model a Game Boy. Um, just go back to the layout, hit A to select everything and then go G, Z and just move it all up till your Game Boy is roughly sitting on your floor. So what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is we're actually going to be adding in some lights, setting up some things in our render engine and it will render out a nice looking render of our Game Boy. And hopefully it's something that you guys have enjoyed so far. If you guys want to get free access to Skillshare and you also want to support the channel for one month, you can get access for free if you use my link in the description below. And I've got a ton of really cool courses on there that teach you everything from texture projecting, making a simple model and even animating it. And I've got a ton of other character stuff on there as well. And you can try it out for one month free. And it's a good thing for you guys because you get to try it out. And if you don't like it, you don't have to pay anything. And it also just helps support me making this content for the community. So I really do appreciate the support. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in part two.